You're listening to Convenience Matters, brought to you by Nax. Whether it's for food, fuel, drinks, or snacks, about half of the U.S. population shops at a convenience store every day. We'll talk about what we see at stores and what the future may hold for our industry. Here it is, spring 2021, and the thing that's the topic of the news is where are gas prices going, why did they get there, what might happen this summer, and what are some long-term implications for where gas demand and prices are going over the next few years. We'll talk about that today. So social media is all lit up over gas prices are this, they used to be this, uh, who's to blame, why are they going up, when's it going to stop, what will the summer look like? Because uh, as we get more vaccines out there, when will things return more to normal in terms of commuting, demand, supply, all those other issues? The good news is we have those answers for you today. We have an industry expert that'll take us through all these things, Denton Cinquagrana, who is the markets editor with Oil Price Information Service, better, better known as Opus. So welcome, Denton. Hey, guys. Thanks and for having me. I should me. probably start off by saying... My name's Jeff Leonard. I'm with Nax. <laughs> and I am here with you, Jeff, today. My name is Donovan Woods with Fuels Institute and Nax. So that's that's <laughs> basically how you blame uh, working at home and uh, not looking each yes. other in the face. So uh, we're all here. And um, let's just start off, Denton, with um, just the first setup. And right now it is late uh, March, and prices are, are dancing with $3 a gallon. They're about two eighty eight a gallon. They're kind of hanging at that level. Um, what is going on with this price increase we've seen over the last few months? So there's actually a lot going on. And, and Jeff, you set it up perfectly when you said, you know, about social media, you know, flaring up uh, over gas prices, because, you know, there's if there's one thing that people remember is what they pay for gas. So, you know, obviously the three things that move the needle are politics, religion and gas prices, honestly. And, you know, I think what you have to do is take a step back to see where we've been to see where we're going. So obviously demand took a huge hit in 2020. There's, there's no question about that. Annual demand levels were, were compared to the, to the mid nineties, uh, mid and late nineties. Uh, you have obviously from, from the pandemic, the, the impact there. Refineries had to slow down production just because margins were bad. Uh, demand was, was poor, obviously. And then you had OPEC come in and, and reduce crude oil production. And so that brings us back to the kind of late last year when prices just started to, you know, kind of bottom out, find their footing. The negative uh, price for on April 20th last year, not, notwithstanding, of course, that is probably something we'll never see uh, in our lifetimes in a, a negative future settlement for crude oil. Uh, you know, you never say never, but I'm, I'm, I'm 99 point. <laughs> a lot of nines after that, sure, that that'll never happen again. Um, but so we, we've started to prices started to move up at the, at the beginning of the year. And a lot of that was was really kind of based on hope, hope that vaccinations would ramp up uh, with a lot of speed, hope that there's this pent up demand. And, you know, sometimes hope is not the best uh, policy there. Um, so what we've seen is, is prices still continuing to move up on that hope that, you know, the pent up demand, the the, the vaccination rollout, which, you know, at times has been clumsy, uh, at times has, has shown so, has quite some success. So uh, that's been a good sign. Now we wait to see what happens with, with summer demand. I think there's some some predictions out there that we hit some really high numbers during the summer. I think you might get some, some high weekly numbers, but as far as, you know, kind of annual demand for 2021, I still don't think we break 9 million barrels a day. And I don't think uh, on average, and I don't think we take out some of these 2019 levels, I still think we're going to trail 2019 as far as demand is concerned. And, and for the record, uh, the, the last couple of years, we've been sitting at about 9.3 million barrels a day. So 9, 9 million is what, about a, a 10, a 3% drop, um, which is a lot better than the 13, 14 range we saw last year. But but still, um, with the per, some of the predictions being that there's so much um, – there's been a lot of devastation in the co country, and there's been a lot mm -hmm. of people who have really suffered. But there's also been some people that have kind of been sitting on money, and uh, you've yep. heard these these uh, predictions that um, they they are ready to spend, and that could mean pretty heavy travel this summer and in other spending in in the markets, uh, whether it's for clothing or convenience items. 
Sure. And, you know, we did see a little bit of that last summer. I think, you know, last summer people were afraid to get on planes. So instead they did more of the road trip type thing. Um, you know, personally, you know, drove down to, to South Carolina from, from New Jersey in, in June of last year just because we're dying to get out of here. You know, and, and that's not just a New Jersey joke. That's just a, we, we want to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure about that, Denton? I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't I'm, know. I'm positive. I'm positive, Donovan. I, I love the Garden State. You know, can't get good pizza anywhere else. But, um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's one of those things where it, it'll be interesting to see if that happens again this year. I know we've seen over the last couple of weeks uh, reports that TSA has cleared more travelers for for air travel uh, than they have, you know, it's back above last year levels, which again, not that impressive considering what we went, we're going through a year ago. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if that you know, kind of shifts demand from from one molecule to the other, from the gasoline molecule to the jet fuel molecule. I wouldn't be ready to bet on that. I, I think you know, gasoline will have you know some weeks where it's really strong. Can I can I ask a question, Denton? I guess, and well, first of all, let me set this up this way, um, so that if we have more personal jokes throughout this, and you make fun of the Cowboys, I make fun of the Giants, things like that. <laughs> people know that you're pretty much our one or top one or two percent of our guests that have been on this show. I think you've been up here. This is your fourth appearance. So congratulations. There's no prize, but thank you very much for doing that. My question, I get confused. And I think because working on the Fuels Institute side, I'm seeing different things. I'm looking at, you know, you know, internal combustion bands. I'm looking at EVs. I'm looking at a lot of different things all the time. And I start to look and go, okay, last year we we saw there was going to be a dramatic drop off in gas. People weren't going to be driving as much. Now that happened, but at the same time, we saw VMT or vehicle miles travel didn't really match that. People still were doing things. They may not have been going on the same routes to work, but maybe they were taking kids here or there, whatever the case may be. So how do you explain or what's your theory for even though there was or there is a pandemic going on? And it changed travel um, for, you know, in ways we never thought we'd ever see in our lifetime. Did it really drop off that much in terms of consumption? And does that really and I think that's what confuses um, we call it consumers because they see prices kind of going up and they're going, well, nothing really changed for us. How do you explain that? Yeah, so I think, you know. Again, it's it's been an honor to be on here for four times, and I know there's no prize, but hopefully after the fifth time, you guys teach me the secret handshake. That's that's what I'm looking forward to <laughs> most. But um, you know, the whole dynamic between fuel demand and, and and VMTs, you know, just think about how much more fuel efficient these ve the vehicles we drive today are. Mm -hmm. So I think that you you might see let's say you know instead of having gas guzzlers, you have more gas sippers, so to speak. So I think there's been a little bit of that that makes the whole demand. Uh, VMT dynamic maybe not match up as it as it once did. Uh, like you said, uh, internal combustion engine bands, uh, electric vehicles, uh, hydrogen is a, a new hot topic. Um, Donovan, if you remember, you know, kind of a, a personal story when we were at that one fuels institute meeting, we went to that one station in San Francisco that had the hydrogen dispenser. Yep. And that was yep. pretty neat. Yep. So um, that would be probably the closest thing you would to your kind of typical, you know, kind of gasoline station, but, you know, kind of get off topic there. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, even with this push to, um, you know, kind of ban the internal combustion engine, you know, gasoline is going to be around for, for quite a while. Uh, if you look at some of the data as far as uh, EV sales, I mean, certainly they're, they're making inroads, but it's going to take a long time. So in thinking about gas prices. I, traditionally, uh, we, we explain gas prices, they follow oil prices. When oil prices go up, sure. there's 42 gallons in a barrel. When oil prices go up a dollar, gas prices tend to follow. Uh, we don't predict they will, but they tend to. And historically, that plays out over time. Uh, in the spring, we also see about a 50% run up, a 50 cent per gallon run up. Um, related to the switch over to summer blend fuel, and that requires some refineries um, rejiggering re operations for different production. Uh, the the more expensive fuel blends, the boutique fuels, all those things in higher demand from February on. All those things lead to about a fifty cent run up, and that's about what we've seen 
since uh, the beginning of the year. Now, you had mentioned earlier that um, there's three things that you'll see on social media, and it's um, gas prices, religion, and politics. Let's take – we'll set aside religion. We'll save that for the next time. But gas prices and politics, (laughs) certainly, you're seeing a little bit more about, uh, well, gas prices are increasing because of this or they're increasing because of that. Um, Now – Sometimes it's it's causal and sometimes it's a casual relationship. Is what we're seeing right now, we have a new administration, we've seen a ramp up in prices. Uh, what type of direct relationship is there uh, for those who uh, want to put out something on social media? Okay, well, let's, let's first start with gas prices are not moving up because the Biden administration canceled the Keystone XL pipeline. Let's, let's just throw that one out there right now. That one is just... It's just not ground in reality, basically. But um, I, I think some of the rise is on, uh, you know, the administration, the incoming administrations, or the now current administrations, um, kind of more climate fighting uh, agendas, uh, being more friendly to biofuels and probably less friendly to to oil in general. So I think there's a little bit of that kind of driving up prices, in that you may have the bans on on fracking. Uh, and things like that, which we have not yet seen. I think, if anything, there's going to be uh, a moratorium on, on new licenses. So I, I think that's that's driven up prices. But again, you know, I think it's 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 a lot of it has to do with uh, not a lot of it, but there's a, a good portion of OPEC taking some some production off 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 the market and being quite disciplined you know in years past when prices go, would go up uh, you you always had the opec cheaters that they're trying to rein in and at the same time you know us production ha- has dropped significantly because prices had, had dropped significantly in 2020 and now not you know now that prices are at a uh, you know kind of a more acceptable level for those producers uh, in places like west texas and you know in, in those areas and they're actually being a little bit more prudent this time around too, because the, the one phrase that's being thrown around is capital discipline. Basically, they've been, you know, they, they, their investors want some money back now. So if they come in and rush out with a with a bunch of production and bring production levels back up towards 13 million barrels a day where they were, you're going to see prices prices drop, and then they're not going to have as much cash flow to give back to their investors. And whether that's uh, in the form of uh, dividends for their shareholders or the banks that they owe money to, et cetera. So I think they're being a little bit more disciplined. So you're seeing less oil less oil on the market these days, but at the same time. You don't need as much oil. I mean, considering gasoline demand is, is still down year on year, diesel demand has you know gone through fits and starts, and you know is pretty close to where it's been. But jet fuel demand is way down, so you know you don't need as much oil. And then there was the whole thing last month from uh, you know the deep freeze in Texas that forced down a lot of refineries. That probably more so than the, the rise in, in oil prices, or at least maybe a 50-50 amount, contributed to, to gasoline prices moving up the way they have really over the course of mid-February through through much of March. That's a great point. You, you sometimes forget about <clears throat> life. And I know we try to uh, keep this this podcast and all things you do kind of evergreen, but that mentioning what happened in the winter of 2021 um, with Texas and that shutting down, it was a lot more dramatic, I think, than I think many people thought, especially when you don't live there, you just assume it's bad. But when you're living there, it's probably worse. But just to go back a little bit from a consumer uh, point of view, what can we expect in terms of as things continue on, you mentioned what you th- your thoughts on the different types of reasons why um, fuel consumption is going down, whether it's people are buying more efficient cars, which is what's happening, but also people buying smaller cars or EVs or maybe hydrogen. What's your projection for 2021 in terms of not so much pricing, but just consumption and what people are going to be doing patterns wise as we move into the summer? Well, I think it's, you know, again, you don't have to be Nostradamus to say gasoline demand is going to be better in 2021 than it was in 2020. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I I think, you know, like I mentioned before, I think it's going to be difficult to to match the the 2018 and 2019 levels. And I think those are going to be the benchmarks uh, this summer is going to be set up against. Uh, I I see improvement, but I just don't see this huge kind of spike in demand that that some are are really calling for. I I still think, uh, and again, it may not necessarily be a huge chunk of the pie, but 
there's a lot more folks working from home now and and not going back. You know, personally, you know, we don't. I don't have an office to go. Well, my basement is now my office, so uh, that's that's where I'm I'm working from these days. And and you know, you know, it it, it is what it is. Uh, and again, you know, I think a lot of the lost demand last year was from social events, going to ball games, going to you know mm-hmm. a, an arena to to watch a basketball game, people traveling to to the NCAA tournament, things mm-hmm. like that, going to bowl games during college football season. So some of that will will come back, obviously, with with more fans being allowed in stadiums this summer. Uh, so the, there's that social aspect that we probably maybe discounted a little bit last year, but I think that's going to be one of the things that you know we talk about road trips and and, and stuff like that. But I think the social aspect of going to a ball game. Uh, will 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 kind of you know kind of help demand along the way, but again, I think it's going to be difficult to achieve those 2018, 2019 type levels. So, will these road trips just be traditional family vacations, or will they be because the town rips the bones from your back? <laughs> you know, I, I, think, I think that's a Jersey that's Springsteen family. reference. Sorry, you know, you you. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, um, yeah, the you know do, doesn't matter. You know. Do, Let's not mention that he was arrested pretty much like right near where I live. So uh, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> but anyway, uh, um, you know, the, the, I, oh God, I lost my train of thought there talking about the boss. But um, I, I still think there might be a little bit of apprehension about getting on planes. Uh you know, I think until just about everyone is vaccinated, I think there there's still going to be a little bit of apprehension there. So there might be a preference to do more more of the road trips. And you know, I, I don't think I'd ever do it, but to drive to from New Jersey to Disney World seems like you know something I I would never want to do. But you know, did it to, to South Carolina last year, and uh, you know, obviously it's several hours difference. But again, it was it it was it was. It was tough, you know. You you think just driving is, is an easy thing, but um, it it can it could it, it could wear on you. So, uh, but I do think the the road trip might be the the preferable uh, way yeah, to do and, it. And Donovan, summer. one of the things that that we've we've talked about both um, uh, at Nax and the Fuels Institute is is the idea of routines. And once you settle in a routine, it's tough to break a routine. And and Dent, you talked about yeah. um, now working at home and. and People are, are increasingly perhaps going to um, stay at home. Uh, same with, I would imagine, same with road trips, that if last summer it was in the rearview mirror, things always, you remember more of the good things and you forget some of the bad things about road trips. But um, when you think about this summer, uh, we, we have a survey out with our members right now asking when do they expect that uh, things, uh, demand will feel about back to where it was before the pandemic. And you know, right now it's still in the field, but a slight majority say that this summer they feel pretty good that it'll be, it'll be back to where it used to be. But there's a, a still a significant percentage that said 2022. So I think it really mm-hmm. depends upon where you are, where you're located, where your store is, what, what your customer base is. But um, you tie that to what you're talking about, fits and starts, that it's not going to be that, that, that linear path that we traditionally see that and, and hope is involved hope and I, I suppose a little little fear um, which is the opposite of hope because it's supply demand and then it's perceptions about the what ifs and we saw oil prices crater I think as much because of the concern about fear the fear related to a vaccine rollout not here in the US but in Europe where it's a little bit more of a mess. And, and all of these things in a normal year make it pretty chaotic to, to kind of point out what the big trend will be because you're just one, one news headline away from everything changing. And now we have all these mm-hmm. balls up in the air. But um, it looks like based on what you're saying and based on the, the numbers you're looking at that a slight decrease year to year, but we're moving in the right direction and hopefully – uh, things will settle down, and and you also touched upon uh, upon more of the long term. And uh, in, in, uh, Donovan was talking about that, but are there things that we might want to be looking at um, beyond some of the? You mentioned some with the with the administration and some of the new vehicles and things like that. But big picture things, what are what are things that people should be saying? Hmm, that's that's interesting and, and more than interesting. That could be impactful. Well, I think in the, you know, kind of future, but near future, uh, gasoline demand comps are, are going to start looking spectacular. 
you know, <laughs> when you compare where we're going to be in the middle of April versus the middle of April last year, don't be seduced by that. Um, but also at the same time, you know, retail right to retail margins are going to be much lower than they were a year ago as well. So that might be a, a bit of an evening out. I think refiners in the second quarter are going to be, you know, bragging about how great their margins were uh, just because they were so poor in the second quarter of last year. So that's kind of the, the upfront type things. Uh, if you pay attention to, to, to the Wall Street bank, big investment banks, and you know, you start to hear, hear the term super cycle. Uh, hmm. I don't see how that's, you know, going to happen. Uh, you see the call for 80 and $100 crude oil. I, I still think there's potential for higher prices, but, you know, 80 to $100, I don't see it with everything that's laid out in front of us right now. And now we're um, about what, 50? You know, uh, about just under 60. We uh, have been dropping over the last couple of days. We ran up to, uh, excuse me, uh, about $67 right, yeah. on, on WTI. So we're, we're down a good 10 bucks or so from there. So again, the rising gas prices that you were talking about and that, that kind of correlation, uh, we should probably see start to see, we're, we're going to start to see gasoline prices you know, plateau and then start to, to cool off and, and drop even as we get into the, uh, you know, kind of the RVP transition to the, to the summer grade gasoline, which, you know, not, it is a little bit more kind of, you know, quote unquote inside baseball but you know the the epa uh passed these new rules and they streamlined gasoline that's going to make it you know potentially a little bit easier so when gasoline gets tested for you know through the big testing companies they test for a bunch of different things and, and in the cities like dc and throughout new jersey and new york and philly um and the major cities where you have to use reformulated gasoline they had what was called the complex model the things they're going to be testing for now are sulfur content RVP and benzene. So those are the three big ones versus just a litany of tests that they used to have to, to pass. So, you know, with those three things being the key to the to, to those tests, the gasoline's probably going to be a little bit easier to make. Um, and again, I'm not a chemical engineer, so, you know, can't get too deep into it. But, <laughs> you know, reading the rules from the EPA and everything. And what that might also do is you may have a refinery, say, in Europe that wants to export gasoline components to uh, to the to the to the U.S. And they may not have been able to make the specification for one of those things that used to be tested in the complex model, like maybe you some sort of aromatics. Uh, but now because it's just, oh, but we, we made it on the sulfur, we're making it on, on the RVP and our benzene is is good enough, then then you might open the door for, for more imports from Europe. And Jeff, like you said before, Europe, uh, you know, to call their vaccination program right now clumsy might be the biggest compliment you could give them. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> they're, they're going to see potentially, and especially if this is, if this is, you know, kind of longer term in Europe, a lot more components and, and pieces that go into baking the gasoline molecule coming to the U.S. as well as as well as diesel. Uh, their diesel demand is is, is way down in, in Europe because of because of lockdowns and 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 the various waves of COVID and the and the variants, et cetera. So uh, you know, I, I think this summer is going to be going to be interesting. And I think right now you have a motivation for refiners to produce gasoline because the uh, the margins are you know, uh, certainly acceptable. Can I, can I add something to this? Just, just as we wrap up a little bit here, Jeff, and I want to uh, bring in our audience to, to something that's related to just retailers in general, not just the fuel markets out of it. Uh, just quick story. My uh, closest friend is moving back from Austin, Texas to um, the DC area. So for him, everything has always been the last 10 years QT. You know, that, that's his place to go. And I asked him, this is just yesterday. So, you know, he said, why don't you guys have any, why, why do we never have any QTs up here? Or, or, and I said, you know, a quick trip, sorry. I said, we have Sheets or we have Wawa, we have certain other retailers. He goes, man. So I said to him, well, where were you going to get your gas? And he just, I don't know, wherever. But in his mind, QT was more than just fuel. A retail station was more than just fuel. And I kind of measure life on where my friends think and things like that. So if the idea that consumers are beginning to look at your stores as more than just a fuel um, place or destination, I think that's a good thing where you may see consumption dropping or we're kind of just really finding what the new normal is. 
at the same time, you know what I did find over this last year, Jeff, and, and then I'm a fast food junkie and I'm trying to change, but it's hard. When I would go to my certain fast food establishments late at night, a lot of them were closed because of the pandemic. They changed their hours and reduced hours. But you know who was always open? My local convenience store. And I won't name chains to be favored, but I do have a favorite or here or there. But they were open and they had fresh food and it was always available regardless. So as a retailer, in my mind, from the Fuels Institute side of things, looking back at the NAC side of things, things are going to change with fuel. It's going to continue to change. But what you can do is be prepared by always just having what your consumer or customer wants, whether it's fuel or also being able to fuel their body is kind of our tagline in the uh, Convenience Matters logo or um tagline but that's just my two cents and i'll you know i'll leave it to you jeff to wrap this up but again thank you denton for all that good information i appreciate yeah. it yeah and and just to amplify that that's that's where we've been moving as an industry we want to be and we've seen that over the last couple of years we've been as much known for what's inside the store as the price of gas and and certainly the past year and a half has been bumpy a uh, year plus i should say um and and hopefully we can return to that that uh, time when focus on the in-store offer, there's seating, there's some of those other things that amplify the food and um, you know, we can we can evolve um, and also look long-term and do some of the things that the Fuels Institute is doing. So Denton, next time when we have you on, we'll talk more about some of these trends and we'll also each bring our <laughs> playlist of our, our favorite road tunes because uh, obviously uh, Fuels and, and some music uh, go hand in hand and uh, we can, we can um, share some of those. So uh, I don't I don't have any walkout music because our budget doesn't include is that. It, so I, I don't know. Is it possible? We no no walkout. Oh, I was going to say, could we somehow get our, our engineer to kind of tie in your favorite song by Michael Jackson? Jeff, oh yeah, well, as long as we play like six notes and the seventh has to be off key or something <laughs> like that. So uh, we'll figure that. We'll leave that to Blake uh, to play to misplay some music so we don't get sued. And uh, until then, uh, thank you once again, Denton. And My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thank you all for listening to Convenience Matters. Convenience Matters is brought to you by Nax and produced in partnership with Human Factor. For more information, visit convenience.org.